Guys, I'm back with a quick recap on the tour of the Southern Highlands that happened this past weekend down in Georgia um, out of this little town called Ballground. And it'll be a little bit of power analysis, but mostly just my take on how the whole race played out and what happened. So the first, uh, they called a stage zero, the crit, and then there was a time trial which is Merc style, so it's kind of cool not to have to bring a TT bike, especially because mine is in pieces right now. A circuit race, and then the road race. I was really going for the road race. Um, I love road races. Uh, they suit me well. This one I was really worried about because it's 88 miles, over 8,000 feet of climbing. The reg list. I uh, wasn't sure how that was going to play out after three other stages. But uh, you just got to go and put yourself on the start line and was definitely worried about fitness. Just this winter was tougher for me to get as fit as I'd like to be for March. Last year, I was probably like 30 to 35 points higher on my CTL. Um, but you know, I think a lot of people were in that same boat. And I had to use the off season to, hey Jason, I had to use the season to get stronger in other parts of my body muscularly. Um, did some lifting, so just focus on things that I needed to take care of. So, um, but I was still excited. You know, it's a fun race, and you can't be ready for everything. And this is actually a really good example um, that I talked to my athletes about. I was really trying to get ready for this race as much as possible. So when we went to Crosswinds Classic, it was the end of three weeks of training, and um, you know, this is the preface is this is not an excuse. This is just cycling. You can't be 100% for every event. And I had a teammate once that was like, well, I want to be 100% all the time. If you think you're going to be 100% for everything, you're really only 90 to 95%. Like if you really want to put in the training, put in big blocks to get ready for a big race, you have to set your ego aside and go to another race a little tired. But it hurts. I mean, we lost in uh, Arkansas at Crosswinds Classic. And I think if we, if that was a big race for us. We would have all been more teed up for it. Wouldn't have killed each other at camp the day before. Um, and since it was the first race to not get the W, it really was just like, oh man, and I I was struggling towards the end. Um, just Watts weren't there, just clearly tired, but it's, it's such a mental, like, you just start to question things. And that's why um, I'm actually got asked to be on a podcast next week. One thing is about like why have a coach. That's the reason why. Like I lean on Patrick a ton and Jason, and that's why I love coaching with these guys. Um, I was just like, man, what have I been doing? Like I've been doing the wrong things. And then sometimes it just takes somebody to be like, dude, you're tired. Chill. It'll be more beneficial for down the road at Tour of Southern Highlands. You're planting um, the seeds that you want to sow later in the season. Like you just can't be on for everything. So I wanted to share that because um, people – it's hard and it's frustrating and you can't always be on and you P I know people that don't go to a race because they don't think they're ready to race. And it's like, you just gotta, just gotta go and race, just go do it. So we'll get into this. Um, crit. So real basic. Uh, I want to post this simply because I saw someone else's crit warm up That was like a couple sprints and like really chaotic. And then it just didn't really make a ton of sense to me of like actually warming up your body. So zone two for about, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever ends up working for you, a little bit of tempo, chill. This is a little bit of sweet spot getting a little spicy too early, you know, ride that in between wave of tempo and threshold. And then I got off the bike and went and did a couple sprints. Um, this was on a trainer, uh, hate riding the trainer, but it was a night crit. So there was really nowhere to ride around um, beforehand. It was dark and there was like, it was in this little downtown and people were just getting drunk and stuff. Crit file, as usual, just a lot of anaerobic, going crazy. Um, you know, this, the, the reg list was, was pretty stout. A few, three or four pro teams, um, Hincapi, Cyclists, uh, I was going to try and pull the results list up here. Um, CCB is now considered a pro team. Um, Ty Magner was there. Who else? I thought there was one more. There's CCB. CS Velo out of Pennsylvania is not a pro team. They're really good, though. Um, tons of Nova Nordisk guys. 
Polymer Cycling had a whole crew there. A um, few guys from 706 Project out of Atlanta. 706. <laughs> 706. It's a cool new name for you guys. Um, so anyways, you know, with me and Patrick, we're kind of outnumbered. And I have no shame in saying that crit is just beyond my ability of doing well at. Um, I hate cornering fast. I, uh, it's, you know, it's no secret. It's just not, never been my uh, thing. Um, something I need to continue to work on, but, uh, stayed with the main group. So like races going up the road, um, Hing Cappy went like one, two, three, four, five, I think <laughs> something embarrassing for, I think the other pro teams. Um, and there was 26 of us that finished on the same lap. So I, I really screwed up though, as we were coming around the last lap, I don't know, I guess I was just out of it and like gaps formed and I crossed over with some guys and we lost 20 seconds. Um, that, that was stupid. <laughs> so that was bad. Um, so I'm mid pack on GC at that point. Um, we had a circuit race the next day. And unfortunately, this race has a live document. So they said that, well, we can change anything up to the start time. I, I thought the circuit race was supposed to be two hours initially. Then it was an hour and a half. Well, by the time we got there, it was going to be 45 minutes. So we're doing another crit just on a bigger road. It's super fast. It's like a highway with a false flat incline. Um, you're not getting away on that. It's going to be a sprint finish. So... Nothing that really suits me well. Um, there's the little elevation, and you go down and up and down. So we chased each other around for 45 minutes and stayed with the group. So, um, oh, duh. I skipped the time trial. Hmm. Time trial in the morning. So Mercs, it's going to be two miles. Oh, wait, they shortened that too. So it's going to be a 1.2 miles. So this is like an all-out effort don't blow up though and it's slightly downhill you turn and you come back up that slight incline so the strategy that i was thinking of you know don't go out you gotta go out really hard you gotta get up to speed go out really hard nail that corner and it was a really it was a narrow road and you only had the other side of the lane obviously to, to swing around in so you really had to be right gear start turning at the right time um, seems a little faster to just pass the cone a little bit and, and rail it and then get out of the saddle, get up to speed. And then you got to stay arrow. It's, you can't really got to be tucked most of the time. So I was really happy with this. Um, here's my TT and really couldn't ask for more. Um, here I started going out and I pulled it back a little bit because I just I got nervous I guess you know you don't want to go too you're going fast and you don't want to go too hard and you don't want to explode pretty quick turnaround got out of it and I mean I was anaerobic the whole time which is good um here's the problem the guy that worries and goes threshold he loses five seconds to the guy that won so the guy that won is dang nah so, you know, come ready to boss it and win or be a little bit timid and get eighth place. Um, so that's the error there. I don't know. It's not my, that short of stuff is not my strong suit, but I'm happy with it. Top 10. Hey, beat a lot of pros. I'll take it. So move me up in GC. Then we did the circuit race at night and the road race. Uh, I was feeling in my legs the next day and... Patrick and I were trying to figure out what was going to go on. And, you know, a guy rolled early last year. Um, and people didn't want, you know, the course people wanted to chase initially. But if something gets away, they might not. Um, I was really worried if I was going to be able to get over these climbs with these guys. And I thought maybe I'd, you know, kind of sneak away. So the road race comes and I made an error in the first climb <sighs> I'll zoom in here it's gonna be hard to see this 
not hard to visual not hard to visualize hard for me to look at this um, I haven't looked at all this yet so sorry that I don't have it all queued up um, yeah so race starts we get going and I didn't realize that we were on coming up to the climb when we were coming up so <laughs> People are attacking this road. They said, hey, we're going neutral to this little bridge. And then you're racing after that. So I'm like, I'm, I'm up front. I want to get over this weird little bridge, whatever it is. It was pretty narrow, but it was fine. Um, it's a chicane. You go flying into it over the bridge. And it's kind of broken pavement. And it, and it zigzags back and forth. And you're sort of like entering this wooded area. And I'm like, this is the time. Everyone's People are just coming off the bridge. It's going to be strung out. There might be a swell behind me. I'm just going to hammer it and try and get up the road a little bit and see maybe a couple people come with me right away. Maybe we start something right off the bat. So we turn the slight left corner and it's a nice little uphill. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Let's do this. So <sighs> little uphill. And then we start to turn the corner and I'm like, oh boy, this is actually the climb. So I try to let off the gas a little bit and it was right here. I let off the gas. I let off the gas slightly and I'm about to let off the gas here and seven guys come like barreling past me. So I like gas as much as I can. I'm like, ooh, that hurt really bad. And I'm like, well, I got to keep going and I'm chasing these guys. And I'm seeing yellow jersey, hincappy, hincappy, cyclists. Uh, six pro dudes and one amateur guy from Palmer. Maybe, yeah, two amateur guys. Um, anyways, just going as hard as I can. The guy in Hincapi is sitting on my wheel. Uh, he's not going to help me get up there. We're going, and I'm just slowly watching these guys ride away. And this was... No, this actually wasn't the start of it. This, these two surges initially, and trying to get away and hammer it, that was the death. I started just way too hard too early. Um, totally regret that move. But you know what? Had they not done that, for whatever reason, maybe they were waiting for something else. Maybe, you know, I don't know, hammering on the first climb, maybe it could have been a good move for me. You play your hand and what happens happens it's actually very reminiscent of tour of tuna the nrc race in 2012 where i tried to hammer it up a hill and the whole peloton came past me i got dropped and i rode 85 miles by myself with stragglers so wah so anyways get to the top those dudes are hammering it now there's 55 of us left and people are trying to pull it back. <laughs> I'm just thinking this thing is not coming back. Like, we're just, the group's going to get shattered on these climbs. Um, and I was frustrated. And then I thought of Hal Elrod's book, Miracle Morning. I was at this leadership conference and he was talking about, you know, things that you can change. And he goes, from this training that he was in, you get five minutes to pout, moan, be angry, whatever word you want to say. And then you got to get over it because you can't change it. And so I was in the group. I was like, you know, I can't change this. There's seven guys up the road. There's still three spots for top 10. Maybe they'll drop somebody. Like, what am I going to do now? Where, what is my move? So as a group, we go over the next climb together. And it was definitely difficult. Um, and it made me kind of wonder, okay, where am I going to make a move here um, in this race? Because I'm not going to be able to climb with these guys all the time. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the big climb, or the second climb, I guess I should say, was this guy. And... You know, it's hard. It's We're blasting anaerobic. We're going VO2 max. We're VO2 max again. Then you dip down. You go back up. And the spikiness, I, I you know, we all get kind of blasted from that. It's just a lot. Like, this, this can't go on the whole race. So I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm 
watching moves, you know, go and get pulled back, go and get pulled back. And there's just, you got to be patient. I'm thinking to myself, all right, it's me and Patrick. There's teams in here now with five, six guys. They can keep blasting off and it doesn't matter. Eventually something's going to go. Um, how do I pick the right one? And that's, you know, part luck, part, you know, okay, taking inventory, who's here? If certain teams go, who's not going to be chasing? Like where, take, take inventory of the chess game going on, right? It's not one-on-one. It's me and Patrick versus seven versus six guys versus a team of four guys versus, and you know, in cycling, everyone's then you get in a break and people are working together and the other guys aren't working. So how are we going to, how are we going to make this happen? So we tried to follow bigger groups that might get away. Um, and you know, it was and Patrick looks and say, Hey man, you see a trend here? And we were just gassing it coming back, gassing it coming back. Um, so I'm thinking that if a group can get away, that's going to happen again. And the next group get the, that gets away, they're not going to be be brought back. So going around, we're on the second lab, and there's just that lull. There's that like second where the race seems to stop, and you have zero seconds to think. That's when you go. And I was up front. I was in a good spot, not on the front, but in the front. You always have to put yourself in a position where you can launch off. Like if if I'm not swearing on these on these videos. So if stuff goes down, you need to be able to react. And that's people always say, oh, I got boxed in. You didn't get boxed in, you box yourself in. If you're in a position and you cannot make a move, move. Like now. Start thinking, how do I get around these people? How can I, if, if three guys go up the road, how am I going with them? Or if you don't see your teammate in your periphery, you know he's somewhere doing something else, he's boxing himself in, it's up to you now. So I'm in a good spot and there is actually a guy up front to my left, a guy on my right, and I could see this window here and this guy was kind of like creeping up and there was just this like, uh, bam, gas it. And I hit it and um, this bike just freaking flies and it was on a false flat uphill. So I get a gap, cruise around a corner, just get super arrow. Um, I think the attack was right here and the attack was good. My power, I was getting zapped and that was the other reason why I went. So we've already raced about hundred miles this weekend. This is the second, second weekend. See this is all, we're going all falls flat, excuse me, jam it, threshold quickly, go around some corners, sit a little downhill little rollers tipping up on it's mostly in trying to reach into um threshold here and i'm struggling and going up and this is actually i made a comment um, on my facebook you know blasting away and doing tempo this is not going to get you away and it didn't so i i'm jam they getting they're getting close i'm jamming it up this hill see this is the incline right here so you can follow along with that and then going on the downhill to stay in arrow jam it jam it and then downhill trickle. And then I just try to get into as much of a groove as possible. As I'm going downhill, a lot of like, you know, tucking, arrow tucking, and just keep hammering up these little spikes. If you're staying in the green, you're not gonna get away. You have to have these bursts to keep going, keep going, keep going. And then, you know, you're gonna see when it, when I, it's all about keeping the speed up. And then this is when guys, came around and we grouped up and you can see there's all these spaces here down where I was able to hide in the group or in our group, like I'm not pulling through. Um, it's my turn to coast for a couple seconds. And then these are the climbs because obviously there's nothing, there's no zone one or two on these climbs. So Tim Mitchell from CCB, Aeneas Fry and uh, Will Cooper. I didn't know it was Will. I've never met him in person from CS Velo, crazy climber. They come up to me and I'm like, yo, did you guys uh, ditched them on the climb because we're coming around the start finish. He's like, no, we ditched them on the descent. And I'm like, oof, that means they could be somewhat close. Well, we motored, we did, you know, high threshold on the climbs. We got in a really good groove together. We had two minutes on the Peloton behind us. We were two and a half minutes from the leaders. Um, and I said, you know, hey, if we can get over around two more laps, that group is going to be shattered. So we just tried to go as hard as possible. Um, to keep the podcast or to keep this video short, 
Um, we got around together on the last lap and Tim Mitchell got dropped on the first, second to last climb, um, just ran out of gas. Northeast guy has horrible winter, so I'm assuming just hasn't been able to ride a ton and we're at mile 78 at that point. Um, and then the last climb is just steeper and Will took off like a banshee. And uh, I don't know what a banshee is, but it sounds right. Um, and just absolutely dropped me and Aeneas. I chased after him. Aeneas then caught me. And then we just hammered it as hard as we could home. Got to the top, ripped down the descent, and crossed the line for 8th and ninth. So, um, you know, I'm super happy with that. I would have loved, 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 loved to have been on a podium there. I would have loved to have won a race. Um, that would have been next level for me, having four pro teams there or three pro teams there, uh, stack squads. And, you know, these were, this was the time trial. You know, I'm okay with that. My Garmin said 222. I think everyone had that, like, miscalculation on it. Um, only ten, nine of us did under uh, 229. Um, so I'm in some some good company there for sure. And then the road race, eighth again. Um, so yeah, Will put 22 seconds in on us. That's a mighty stout ride, Sir William. And uh, yeah, this guy, okay, he was in the break. Um, the Gateway guys are always strong. They beat up on me last year at Tour of Jasper Highlands, these Highland races. So anyways, um, you know, fun fun race, fun weekend. Uh, it's a long weekend. Stage races aren't my favorite because you just got to pack your whole house and go to a bike race. But, uh, you know, back at normal life now. Got to work. Um, go make money to pay for bike stuff and go race. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about this race, let me know. Hope you enjoyed the recap. And I'm looking forward to hopefully getting to go do Full Gas Omnium in Tulsa in two weeks. Uh, actually, now it's like a week and a half. Um, if I can work things out with my work schedule and just gonna be riding in Memphis this upcoming weekend. And then. Um, more races in Alabama starting in April. Thanks for watching. See ya. Uh, and check out the sponsors below. I forgot to do a little commercial in here. There's a lot of them that are awesome. And I will say this, the only reason that I associate myself with a sponsor is because it's the best product. I don't go out to get a product to get try and get just free stuff that's like mediocre. That's why I work. You know, you wanna spend money on things that you enjoy, but if someone has an awesome product and I can help them promote it, and, and make sure that this company succeeds so that this product lasts and is around. That's why I wanna pump these companies up, not just for free stuff, but yeah, disclaimer, um, they'll give me discounts or free stuff, um, but you should check it out. And let me know what questions you have, and I appreciate people that have given me feedback. I hope this microphone made it a little bit better. We'll see.